So hi from my side as well. My name is Sebastian Daschner. I'm a freelancer working mainly with uh, Java Enterprise and in the enterprise section. I'm from Germany, Munich. And yeah, today I want to talk about uh, Java EE and REST and, and Hypermedia. So um, I'm going to talk about how to put back Hypermedia in REST with JuxRS and Java E technology. So who of you has been working with REST in projects? Hands up. Sebastian ダフェルと申します。あの、主にあの、Java Yeah, a few people. Very good. Very good. Um, so first of all, I want to show you what REST APIs um, could look like in real-world projects, and which are often not really what REST is considered to be. Um, so I want to show you that in the command line. And for example, I will show here some HTTP examples with uh, requests and responses and how they would look like in a typical Java E project, right? So sometimes you have something like this. You're posting to a resource, right? Which is called li like a verb, do some action, for example. And you have a re uh, request body and a response body, right? Which is normally wrapped in, um, H uh, in XML, right? So something like this. Param and then request, right? As a request. And as a response, you get something like this back response with some value, right? And of course, you see that this somehow looks like um, an RPC call over HTTP, right? And not really what um, what REST should should consider uh, be considered to be. Um, this is really like an um, remote procedure call. You have a resource which um, looks like a um, method, right? Do some action. And you have some inbound and outbound parameters like this request and response, like, like on a method, right? You have um, parameters on a method and you have a return type. And actually, uh, I've seen both. It doesn't even matter if you calling a method like do some action or get some uh, information. Right, um, but both examples are really like a um, remote procedure call over HTTP, and this is what I often see in projects. Um, but what REST is about, it's about resources. So, what are resources in your API? Um, for your EE application, your um, application is talking about maybe users, if you have a user management so, uh, software, right? Or it's uh, about articles, uh, books, about objects and not verbs, right? And the resources of your REST API should in fact reflect these objects, like users, like articles, like books, like objects itself and not um, call, uh, named like verbs. So for example, something like this. Um, we, we have a user management software and now you're calling a user's resource, like get on users, right? Th named like an object. And this, in fact, could be a list of all users um, in XML again. Like you have one user, and the user, of course, has an ID, 12345. And it also has a name, a username, for example, Duke. And it has, let's say, a motto, Java, the old rocks. And that's our response here. The list of all users and containing one object, one user or maybe many users, right? And now you see that um, somewhat 
hem um, semantic HTTP was huge used here because now you we are talking about resources and not calling methods over HTTP and also we are accessing the methods which the uh, with the uh, HTTP methods and uh, we are accessing the resources sorry with the HTTP methods how it was meant to be like get for retrieving an object and not post right and Stop. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Um, maybe just a little bit of what he's done so far already. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to share the project of the project. I want to share the project of the project. I want to share the project of the project. I want to share the project of パラメータを入れてあのそしてあの do なんとかみたいな動詞の形でパラメータを入れてでまたレスポンスとしてまたパラメータをなんとかもらうみたいなあのことは厳密に言うとあの RFC みたいなあのことになってしまいますであの今のような形であのあレストはあのそういう RFC 的な使い方じゃなくてリソースの話なのであのそのリソースは例えば本とか何かの具体的なオブジェクトを指してなのでここに画面に書いてる通りあの例えばユーザーであればあのそれを Git にするとこのユーザーの一覧の取得はできるのはあの適切な使い方です。And another example, this is only about reading resources, but what if you really want to call some functionality, like creating a new user? So let me show you another example. Here we are posting something to the user's resor uh, resource, which is a new user. So now we want to create a new user. Like we are posting a new user um, with a name. No, that was uh, Duke. And of course, a model again to um, that resource. And except um, instead of calling a method like create user with um, inbound parameters, and as a response, now we get a status code back like 201 created. And as you can see, not everything is uh, 200 OK. Rather than you have different status codes defined in the H uh, HTTP uh, specification. And this one says that your newly created resource, that your new created resource was in fact created on the server. And you can also get a location header back with the exact um, location of where your newly created resource resides on the server side. And this is the, uh, the point where hypermedia kicks in. あの先ほど書き出したものはあのそのデータを取得ですけどあのユーザーを追加したい場合はこういうようにそのユーザーにポストしますそしてその,あの名前とかそういうデータにポストしてそしてあの201クリエイティブの HTTP あのレスポンスになりますつまりあの 200OK だけではなく HTTP レスポンスはいろんなレスポンスありますので,でこ,のレスこの201だと確かにあなたの,あの作成したいリソースは作成されましたそしてロケーションヘッダーの中であのそのリソースはどこに作られているのもあの指定はできます Because in hypermedia, you're linking resources which are somewhat related to your current resource together in meta information. So you can follow these links like you would do on a website. Hypermedia ではあのあの例えば作成したリソースのリンクをそ,のそこに入れ込んでそれによってあのあのそのリソースをあの追いかけて開くことはできます
So let's get back to the example before where we uh, read all the users here. But now with a different example, you d now we don't have the ID because before that um, we used the ID to somehow implicitly create the URL of the users, right? Assuming you have the list of all users and now you want to get to one specific user, you're kind of assuming that the URL will look like user slash and then taking the ID one to three for five, right? So the ever an ID or sacrosimas an ID wa tatoeba user itchira no stok surto an user sra sono ID de a kono user wa kono URL ni naru taro tiu sote wa dekimas. But now uh, we do something different. Now we include a link with a relation called self and a URL pointing to user slash one two three four five, which now tells us that the self relation here points to the containing object, the user itself, and the URL is where to find that specific resource, that sub resource here, instead of implicitly creating the URI, how they would look like. No, so you ID you kaki das deva naku, ano, kono link tag no nakade, relation self of kite, this no self was no user detail, such to no de, so no href no nakade, kono user no URL va, do kuni arnoa, ano, hyogen dikimas. And the benefit from that approach is that now the, u the server is in control of the URLs again, which means the server could now even change the URIs as the client should no longer assume how they are structured and how they look like. And now the server always tells the client where to find the related resources. So, no yarikata no merit wa nani to you to, ano, stok shita resource wa, ano, サーバーからどこにあるを指定することはできます。つまりあのもらもらった側はあのそのURLを想定しようとしているではなくサーバーであの決めます。そして例えばサーバー側で変更されたらあのそれは問題にはなりません。By Shitsumon arimasu ka? Feel free to ask questions anytime. We have a translator, so you can also ask in Japanese. Itsu demo kite mo daijoubu desu. Tsuyaku no hito ga imasu no de daijoubu desu. Very good. Right, so um, let me show you another example of how, of what hypermedia can do for you, wha of what uh, benefits you could have. So. Let's do another example, this time in JSON, about books. For example, you have an Amazon API, right, with books or articles, and now you're reading um, books with names, authors, ISBN, prices, and so on and so on. So, there is a hypermedia no 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 merit no lay of shokai shimas. The Konkai wa JSON no lay ni shimas. Tateba あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
other links like add to cart, for example. This is a second link, um, which points to the functionality where I can, in fact, for example, add this book to a shopping cart. で、その中で、あの、先ほどのレートを同じく、そのセルフのレーションがあって、それはそのコンバドコにあるを指しています。さらにそのアッドトゥカートのレーションがあって、それはあの、例えばそのショッピングカートのに追加するキノーがあって、
quantity. How many books do I want to add to my uh, shopping cart? Sorry. Name. And this could be a number, right? それではあのアドトカートのあの何を投げればいいをわかるような フィールドの中ではそのあのリクエストボディのあのジェイソンの形であの例えば1番目はそのその本のID とタイプはそのID はテキストになりますそしてクオンティティはその数あのこの本は1枚とか2枚でそのタイプはナンバーになります and now you see that the client now doesn't even have to know how to access that functionality. Rather than every information which is needed comes from the server, included in the response. Like the method, the HTTP method, which you're right to use, the content type, and so on and so forth. And now the client only needs to know the add to card name up here. And so what add to card really means, what that is. And of course, these two fields, where ID and quantity came, uh, come from. Which means if you have um, a book, for example, then you need to know which ID to send, right? So where does the ID come from? And how many books uh, do I want to add, for example, in a dropdown? So you have a, for a form, how many books do I want to add to your shopping cart? And you have a dropdown, right? And this is certainly client logic and should reside on the client side. But everything else is now dynamically adapted from the server's response. このやり方だとそのあのクライアントはあのそのコンテンツタイプなど知らなくてもよくてあのそれは全てサーバー側で指定することができます。で、あのサクライアント側であの知らなければならないことはそのアドトゥカートの名前は何を指しているとあとあの、ID2とコンティティはあのどういうものとそのそこに入れる情報はどこから取得しないといけないとかどうやって入力しないといけないですけどそれは逆にクライアント側におけるべきのあのロジックだと思います。do you have questions left to this hypermedia approaches in general? この、あの、ハイパーメディアの対応に対して何か質問ありますか? Does yeah, please. Um Takashi, could you give him the mic? Thank you. What's the uh, difference of idea between rails like rest and this presentation, this and um, hypermedia idea? Uh, what's the difference? What was the first one? The between Ruby on rails like rest versus uh, this. Hypermedia. Well, actually, this is what rest is about, um, because. REST is about resources, and REST is about using hypermedia. And hypermedia, in fact, means linking um, resources together by meter information, like you would do on a website. If you have a website, uh, you, you don't constantly go to your address bar and type in new URLs, right? You click on links, and you click on links and follow these. And also, you use forms. Like if you have a context, uh, a cont um, contact information form, right? It gives you some information, and you as a human type in first name, last name, and you send it out, even if you haven't seen that form before. And um, in REST, or what REST should be used, if um, um, there was um, the first, uh, how's it called, dissertation of, um, well, what was his name? 
Um, for, uh, forgot his name. Sorry, of the one who, of the guy, who brought up the rest term representational state transfer by um, yeah, very very red. Anyway, um, it came up that you should in fact use resources and link the resources together using hypermedia, like you would do on a website. So this is in fact rest. This is the real application of rest rather than using just the um, information like name, author, and so forth. Really directing users to the next resource. Roy, Roy Fielding, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I should know that. Hi. Is your qu a question answered or? or oh. そしてあの、これ、これはあの、レストのあの、あるべき姿です。で、あの、え、レストの本質はそのリソースを持ってそのリソースを適切にリンクされることです。で、あの、誰かが書いたものですけど、名前忘れましたけど、ロイフィールディングでした。で、あの例えばあの自分は普通にブラウスを使うとあの何かのサイトに行ってあのリンクをクリックしてそこにあの行くようにあの使っていますけどそういう例えばウェブページを表示してそのページの中で情報を取り出
あのその返事を翻訳するとそのフレームワークと関係なく要はこれは HTTP ですなのでどんなフレームワークとか言語を使ってもあの変わらないはずですその考え方としてうんこういう、えー、とのが目安で動くあのものですよねっていう。Any other questions? Um, yes. Eto, Madawatashi, Koyu, Destogatano, Markitecture, or Scatta Kotana in this Kiri, Domo, Tatueva, Kokode, some action or Jiko Shio to Motadogini, Tatueva, user in Shaw Toste. やりたいっていう時があったとすると思うんですよね。そういう時には、例えばそのユーザー認証に必要なパラメーターも、えっとここでそういうものが必要だっていうことを明示した上で使ってもらうのか、それともユーザー認証っていうのは他の例えばサーブレットであればフィルターのような仕組みを使ってえっと実装するっていうのがまあやり方としてはた正しいというかあのー。推奨されるのかどういった形のことがいいんでしょうか。I'm not so、uh, I I don't know very much about REST architecture and such, but、uh, for example, if you、uh, do these kinds of requests and you have、uh, like use user authentication,、mm -hmm. are you supposed to do user authentication? Inside of this kind of action, or is this example like assuming that you have already done some sort of、uh, user authentication to、mm -hmm. a through a servlet filter or something like that, and then you use it like this? Yeah,、um, the latter one. So, this assumes that you're already authenticated, and for example, you could use、um, a cookie to send a user ID for the authenticated user, and you could do that up front.、Um, Using either uh, header, uh, HTTP header、uh, information, like to exchange the user and the password, or use、um, protocols like OAuth to、uh, authenticate your user upfront and then sending continuously sending that information to authenticate your user on the server side. So this assumes that your user is、uh, already authenticated. Hi, これはあのそのユーザーはすでにあの認証とかはされた。前提の話ですそして例えばこういうリクエストを投げるときにその P ヘッダーとかクッキーとか何かの形であの毎回その情報を投げることになるとかです。Thank you.Okay,、yeah. so、um, what I showed you, there are several, I would call them hypermedia enabled、uh, content types. Like formats, I showed you the, all the examples in XML and JSON, and these are in fact also JSON、um, content types, but in a specific format. And what I showed you was close to the、um, one in the middle, to the so-called Siren、uh, hypermedia types. All of them have their pros and cons. Some of them are simpler; others have more co、um, more control, more power. And you could have a look at all of them in the in the list there. Very interesting for approaches like hypermedia, but you could also invent your own content type. You just have to define things. Wh what I did, so this is of course not a standard, like these und underscores,、uh, links, and actions, and you could do your own company-wide content、um, type, which is then used in your API. You would have just have to document them how they are, kind of showing you、um, how you use your API, right? Because there is no standard yet, so none of them, none of the ones in the list have has one so far, right? こちらに表示されるはあのハイパーメディアフォーマットとかあのハ
ハイプメディアのコンテンツタイプです。で、あの、先ほどあの,の例は、あの、3番目のサイレンに近いんですけど、あの、書いたものは、その、正式的なスタンダードではありません。で、あの、ハイプメディアを使うと、これのどちらかを使う手もあるし、自分のフォーマットを、あの、定義する、あの、手もあります。まあ、そうすると、例えば、その、アンダースコーリンクとかアンダースコーアクションは具体的に何を指しているをあの、えー、明文化にしないといけないですね。でこちらにあの表示されるものはあの、まあ、JSON だけどそ,のそれぞれのデメリットとメリットがあって、まあ、例えばすごくシンプルなものもあるしあのもっとあのコントロールがあるようなものもあります。So, if you don't have、uh, any questions to hypermedia in general, then I would implement something using Java E and JuxRS. Okay, no, s h i t m o n g a n a k e r e b a ano, Java E to JuxRS no jiso stai to me mas. So, I will use Maven to create、um, a Java E7 project. Maven de Java E7 no project to succeed s h i m a s And I will use a Maven archetype to、um, create a new empty project here, which I now、uh, open using IntelliJ. So, the Maven no archetype de atarashi kara no project to tskatte, ano, IntelliJ de hirakimas. It would work. So, my IntelliJ is. Should open, yeah. This is just a newly created、um, Maven project. Who of you has been using Maven in projects in production to build projects? Production de ano, Maven scatta koto aru hito imasu ka? Oh, very good. <laughs> so if you know Maven already, then you know the POM files here, the POM XML, and you can see that it's basically empty. Almost it only contains the Java E7 API, which is provided, which means it won't end up in your WAR file, and your WAR file will almost be empty, only containing the necessary stuff and no third party dependencies. Maven no shitter hito wa, kono, ano, pom file no naka wa shitter to mas kero, ano, ima no jota de wa, sono, Java EE no API shika hai te nai no de, ano, kekka to shite, WAR file no naka de, あのその第三者のライバリーは入らないことになります。And the project itself only contains the JuxRS、um, configuration to bootstrap the JuxRS application and nothing else. It's empty yet. プロジェクトはその JuxRS の,あのコンフィギュレーションのブートストラップしか入ってないので、それ以外は空のプロジェクトになっています。And I will create a new JuxRS resource called books resource, as my example was about books. そしてあの自分の,あの先ほどの例は本についてなのであの books resource という本のリソースを指しているものを作ります。And by annotating the resource with add path, we declared it as a root resource class, and which means that、uh, calling the URI books slash books. Will give us the,、um, this resource here. Pass no annotation によって、これはあのルートのリソースになりますので、スラブックスをアクセスすると、このリソースをアクセスすることになります。And now we will have a new resource accessed by get. This is the list of all books here. And it will give us a list of the book class which I Create right now. And now we will create a simple POJO containing the information like an ID, name, author, and a price. そして単純なポージョを作成しますけど、それは基本的な情報、ID とか名前とか作家とか値段
が入っています。And we will create getters and setters and、um, a custom constructor to simply、um, create pojos here. So, I will get t h a to set t h e m o to get a s And、oh. as this is a Java E7、uh, application or a Java E application in general, we will probably、um, access the pojos by an EJB, right? So, we will inject an EJB here called Bookstore, for example. そしてこれは Java7 なのであの EJP によってこれあのブックストアをここにインジェクトします。And、um, we will now create this EJB here as well, but as our main target is j u x r s this will just be a boring EJB not querying the database but only returning some dummy objects for sake of simplicity. これはあの JAXRS になりますけどあのデータベースとつながらないので単純にあ,の、えー、あるリストをあ返すようにします。So we will create just new dummy objects like a book with ID1,、um, a name like Java written by Duke, and a price. And maybe another book to hello. And that's it. そして簡単なダミデータを作成してあの ID1 の Java という本で、Duke が書いたもので、そしてその値段を入れて、あともう一つの,あのダミデータの項目を入れます。And besides the first、um, resource, we also will have a second resource, which will be、um, to access one specific book. Like the book slash one to three for five, right? Which is identified by an ID. さらにあのもう一つの Git のメソッドを追加して、それはあの ID を指定して、その ID の本の取得するためのメソッドです。And this ID will be a so-called path parameter, so it can be accessed by using the annotation path param and the name, and then we can inject the、uh, ID here. As a parameter into a method and use it here inside the method. So, the ID is pass parameter to the stock, so the method is the method of 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 the method. あの、AGB はそれを返して、それは JAXRS からあの取得できます。And our JAXRS、um, resources will now access the、um, POJOs provided by the EJB and return it to be then returned from a HTTP calls. そしてあの、JAXRS はその本を返して、あの、HTTP からアクセスすると、それを返すことになります。And we want to、um, return JSON objects, right? So, with the add produces annotation and a so called media type like application JSON, we will tell our JAXRS implementation that we want to provide application JSON here. So, the、えー、JSON is the same as produces no annotation, and the media type application JSON is the same as JAXRS is the same as JSON. But this example is、uh, yet quite boring because it doesn't include links and actions in hypermedia, right? So we want to include、um, URI information here as well. で、今の状態だと、この例は割とつまらなくて、リンクとかアクションは全然載ってないので、それも入れたいですね。Therefore, we will create a map in our POJO which contains the map from relation to URIs. And we will call it links map. So, no time any, uh, no, uh, URI, URI, oh, motor, uh, no, map, oh, tsukurimas. So, oh, uh, links to your name, oh, tsukimas. And maybe we want to rename our property here that it's not links but underscore links. And as although we're using JSON, we can use 
JAXB annotations like XML element to provide different names here and all the um, JSON mapping frameworks will take care of these annotations even though it's not JSON but XML but using this we can get rid of any third-party dependencies like including JAXON or so on, on and so forth. So the links underscore links so I want to do it so that it will be XML elements so that it will be able to do it. Now I'm using JSON あの、え、ジェイソンに変換されるので、それは問題なくて、で、結果としてあの、ジャクソンとかそういったような第三者のライバルはあの、使わなくてもいいことになります。for example, we might also want to exclude the ID from the JSON um, output so we will can include at XML transient here. そしてあの、ID を外したいので、そこでXMLTransientというアノテーションをつけます。So now we can um, add the URIs in our JAXRS resource, and I will show you how we will do this. So as we're using Java 8 with Java E7, we can use fancy lambdas and streams to um, loop all over all books and add the URIs here. そして、あの、今、リンクとかの入れ方をします。今、Java8で、あの、Java11を使っているので、あの、こういうような、あの、オシャレの書き方は可能です。So for example, we add some self relation to a, a URI for each book here, and we will have a URI. And now you um, may ask the question, how do we get the information to the URI? As we don't want to repeat ourselves all over again, for example, like providing books plus the slash plus the ID, which comes from the book itself, and to um, repeat the logic here, as the logic is already included in the annotations. その、あの、Therefore, you, we use a component from JAXRS, which can be um, injected using add context, and is called URI info, and it gives us the um, uh, it helps us to programmatically create URIs based on the inf uh, information which is already there in the JAXRS um, annotations. JAXRS no context to your annotation is got there, so no nakade URI info to your class was got there, so the day so no joho was took the kimas. For example, calling get base URI builder gives us um, a builder pattern here, and by calling dot path with a class, it will actually, at runtime, scan this class and use this annotation here with the books value to create a URI which contains books at the end as a URI path. このビルドのパターンであのパスはしてできますのでそこでブックリソースのクラスを入れるとあのアノテーションがを見つけてそのそこに書いてるブックスを取得することになります。and the uh, same can be done by referring to a method here. This is this method down there, which gives us the second part, the ID part. And this will be um, concatenated like book slash and then this part. And of course, we don't want to have the ID with the brackets here, rather than we want to have the real ID. And therefore, by calling builds, which builds the URI, we can provide arguments like the ID which will then be used to substitute that parameter down here. そしてその、あの、2番目のパスの中で、その あの、本当の ID を入れることはできます。
And any questions so far? Now this means we can create URIs with the information which is already there and include the URIs um, here in the response directly. And the same can be done for the second resource here, for the single book. And of course, I will copy-paste program and include the same things into the single book provided by the EJB. And now we can run the example in our Java E7 application server. We will use Maven to build the example, so I used a Maven clean install, and of course it's very fast as we're not using any third party dependencies, and our WAR file is very small. And now we can also run it on, for example, a Whitefly Java E7 application server. And now we can use any um, HTTP client to access our REST API to uh, our REST application. For example, we can use the command line with curl to access it. So, HTTP client to access it. So, we can use and as you can see, it works and outputs JSON data. We can also pretty print it so you can see this is a JSON array containing the two books with the URIs pointing to the specific resources here. And of course, we can also access one specific book, which outputs the single JSON object. Another example which I want to show where JAXRS can help you using this URI info is the reason why I called get base URI builder here was if you, for example, change your domain that you use, let's say, a different domain here, that's a local domain which points also to localhost, but then, as you can see, our created links make use of this resource, uh, of sorry, of this domain as the get base URI builder uses the current HTTP request to read all that information and to, ba to build the URIs based on that. So no URI no build to use to, ano HTTP request no naka no ano domain no use to koto ni narimasu no de bets no local domain kara access de mo so no link wa so no uskatta HTTP request no naka de uskatta domain ni narimasu. For example, if you have a ja um, an enterprise application with a proxy server up front, like an Apache or an Nginx, which is often the case, then you can use the actual URI of your proxy server directly in your AP uh, application without needing to config uh, configure anything, right? Because your URI will be then created as expected without any configuration needed. あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
And for example, if we want to have more complex responses like this here with nested, this is uh, included in a list or in an array, and it has nested object, and this also has a list with nested object. This can be done using POJOs, but of course it's more complex as you would then need um, a complex type hierarchy for your objects, right, for your classes. And I want to quickly show you another example how this can be done in a more programmatic way. で、今あのアクションとかリンクの使い方は紹介しましたけど、で、このあの、えっと、別のあのプログラム的にもっとあのいい感じてディストすることはできるを紹介したいと思います。so let me show you an example which I already have online on my GitHub project called Juxores Hypermedia. It uses the so-called um, JSONP standard, Java API for JSON processing, which is an API shipped with Java E7 and can be used to programmatically create JSON objects with the full control over your output. So, GitHub account それはあの、This project has a sim similar example of what I showed you. It also talks about books and stuff like that in a si so-called Siren hypermedia type. This is a content type um, using hypermedia meta information. And as you can see, it looks pretty much similar. It also has a name, author, and so on and so forth, and some actions. And this is created using the JSONP um, approach. And here you can see a so-called entity builder class, which is a single point of responsibility, and a CDI managed bean. And for example, this method here, bu build book, it um, builds a JSON object. This is included in the JSONP API, this type, and it uses the so-called JSON object builder to build the JSON objects programmatically. As you can see, it adds properties like ISBN, name, author, and so on and so forth, adding everything using a string for the property name and the actual values here. This project is the を取得したりするためのものです。で、ここにあの、JSON the interesting thing is that this JavaX.json, this API is already shipped with the latest Java E7. So you can just use it and no don't need any third party dependencies. You can just go with that approach, have one single class in your whole project which has the information how to map your POJOs, like the books, to the JSON object with the maximum unf uh, to of flexibility. So you have full control over how your output looks like and you can have a really complex objects here but everything um, contained in one single point of responsibility. この and as you can see, I still only have the Java E7 API, which is provided, and nothing else, no third-party dependency. And this is pretty simple here to have the full control over creating JSON objects, JSON output, with, um, with no external dependencies. So, 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 and I can show you the WAR file. It 
only contains the classes we added and no external dependencies, no big jar files. And in fact, it is also pretty small as it only has 6K in size and not megabyte of WAR files with contained, you know, jar files of external dependencies and libraries and so on and so forth. This is just Java E7 and that's enough to um, include and write a hypermedia API and complex enterprise applications. WAR file no naka o mire to sakihodo tsuika sareta class gurai shika haitte nai desu. Kono dekai jar file toka wa issai haitte nai desu. Ano mire to ano 6kilobyte shika haitte nai no de それでもこの形であの複雑なハイパーメディアのアプリケーションとかは作ることはできます。Okay, do you have any questions left to hypermedia in general or JAXRS in, in particular? ハイパーメディアとか JAXRS とかについて何か質問とかありますか If not, then um, maybe you want to have a look at uh, that GitHub project. It's public uh, open source. Here, my username is S. Dashner. The project name is Juxores Hypermedia. And it shows a more comprehensive example of that bookstore example implemented with plain Java E7. Or actually, several approaches, but this approach is the simplest one. GitHub のアカウントで S ダッシュネの,あの JAXRS ハイパーメディアのプロジェクトの中であのこの例はあのサイレンプレイン EE に入っていますで、他の,あの実装の例も入っています We have one question? Yes You can pass the mic, yeah Yeah, just, it works, yeah, yeah Just use it. Yeah. Yes. Ah. 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 That's it. It's already shipped as it is included in the umbrella of Java E, like um, JTA, like um, JPA, like um, JAXP, JAXRS, EJBs. This is all included in the EE specs, mm -hmm. and you can just use it right away by providing that dependency as a provided dependency. You don't even have to ship it in your WAR file because your ap uh, application server knows about these dependencies. And you can just use it right away, and your application server will know what you're talking about. Java E7 is normally written, so the dependency can be used as a dependency. And JAXRS is the same as GPA or GPA, so it's normally written. If you want to add it to the server, if you want to deploy it, the server will know what it is doing. わかることになります、えー、つまり、ジャージーとかレストイージーとかの、えー、ライブラリを使っているわけではなくて、えー、ウェブロジックとかに搭載されているものを使っているということですかね。No. So you're not using REST easy or anything like that, you are just using simple web logic. <laughs> well, it's uh, simple, no. Um, application server like WebLogic include a JAXRS implementation. And REST Easy is, is one of them. Web, um, WebLogic comes with Jersey. This is another one, this reference implementation of JAXRS. And REST Easy, uh, for example, is another implementation which is shipped with Wildfly. So I am, in fact, using, wild, uh, re using REST Easy as I'm using Wildfly here for my examples. And Re Wildfly contains REST Easy as the JAXRS implementation. So I am, in fact, using that. It's just already included in the application server. As the application server supports all of the specifications, which is included in the EE umbrella, and then you can just use your application server right away, and it will understand all of your used specs. あの実はそれをあの使っています。その JAXRS の中であのそれに入っあの
Java E7 だとそれも入ってるので,でサーブ側もそれをもらったらそれをあの今ワイルドフライを使ってるのでそれが入ってるために普通に使うことはできますわかりましたありがとうございます Very good. And we, before we forgot, for everybody who is asking a question, is of course getting a sticker.、Oh. So you will get a sticker, and you just before will also get one. Takashi, would you mind? I was told that the question is that the sticker is not a sticker. So this should encourage you to ask questions. You get presents. So the question is that the sticker is not a sticker. Yes. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah right. You also <laughs> answer the question. But you can ask another one. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Hi, Jax WS. Jax WS. Jax WS. Jax WS. Jax WS. ダイナミックに、動的に、必要な。定義を渡してやるっていうのとだと、どんな。使いどころというか、違いみたいなものってあるんですか。regarding the using Jax R. S.。and this way of thinking。like。adding links and so forth、mm。-hmm. what is the。relation between the these two things。Which two things like using using Jax or S or? Jax WS とかのいずだるで。Oh, oh Jax W、uh, WS. Oh yeah, yeah. This yeah, th this totally different.、Uh, Jax、um, WS is SOAP. These are REST,、uh, no, sorry, not REST services, but web services. And these are in fact something which I showed at the very beginning. Like the HTTP examples, which are not resource based, but like RPC style over HTTP, which call the method with request and responses. And as you saw, this really looks like SOAP, because in SOAP it's the same, but just included in a SOAP envelope and header. And this is,、uh, in, in one word, you would say SOAP is about calling re、uh, resources over the wire, over HTTP, and REST is about accessing resources, accessing objects. And handling with them, dealing with them. あの WS の方はウェブサービスなのであのあの一番最初に紹介したあの RPC 的なやり方になりますであの REST の方はそのあのオブジェクトとかリソースを取得することの話になりますありがとうございます。Yeah. はい。Any other questions? 他の質問になりますか。Oh、yeah, you get a sticker, of course. <laughs> well, if you don't have any other questions, then thank you very much for your attention. 他の質問がなければありがとうございます。